Hi, and welcome back to the Dr. Ramsey Show. Today, I want to introduce you to Dr. David Gallegos. He is a specialist in pain management that is joining our center. He's going to be with us on Tuesdays. Um, I want to introduce you, David Gallegos. Thank Hi, you, Dr. Ramsey. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Um, I met Dr. Gallegos a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. referred to me by a friend, um, Dr. Inouye, who has trained all the doctors in the Valley, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's in one of the management. best known, you know, pain management docs here, you know, great injector, you mm -hmm. know, over 20 years of experience. So, and you were an assistant to him for, <clears throat> yeah. So bit. I worked, I did tons of my training under him. Um, and then after graduation, um, I did work, uh, with him, mm -hmm. uh, for about six to a year, six months to a year. Okay. Um, so yeah. And your, your specialty is pain management. Yeah. Through yeah. regenerative joint injections. Exactly. Regenerative injections, you know, and, you know, regenerative medicine really has been a, around for a long time, uh, but I think it's becoming more popular in terms of patients knowing what it is and asking for it. Mm -hmm. um, and so regenerative medicine in general, what it is, is using um, our body's own biological and cells to um, repair really those areas that are damaged, mm -hmm. whether it's because of a degenerative nature, right? So we talk about degenerative diseases like mm -hmm. osteoarthritis, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Just wear and tear of the body as we age. And so um, if we can halt that inflammation and that damage that our bodies go to mm -hmm. with these regenerative therapies, you know, obviously we're gonna age better, we're gonna function better, we're gonna feel better. And mm -hmm. so that's really my, my area of focus, you know, with my patients and trying to help them live better and, and, and happier, you know? Yes. And more pain free. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so um, these regenerative injections that you do, um, I know the very basic is the PRP, yeah. platelet rich plasma. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, within that world, I guess, of uh, regenerative medicine, you know, the most common one to your point is uh, PRP. Uh, what it is, is uh, it comes from the patient's own body, right? So we do a blood draw. We prep that blood draw mm -hmm. to, so we can isolate those uh, platelets. So the platelets are the part of the uh, cells in our body that helps us, you know, heal, especially when we, you know, have cuts, you know, they mm -hmm. help clotting better. Um, and so we can isolate the cells, uh, concentrate them to a point uh, where, you know, we can then uh, have inject it into an area that's damaged, whether it's, you know, ligaments, tendons, joints. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that helps to calm down the inflammation in the area that's damaged and to help it repair faster and better than mm. it normally would. You know, I inter interestingly, I went to a conference with Dr. Miriam on PRP, mm. like facials. Yeah. And I was amazed at what platelets do. I yeah. don't think I learned that right. in med school. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone does, you know, to be honest. Uh, yeah. But they're, they're, they're so great in terms of that vast... Um, uh, therapeutic margin that they can really provide to mm -hmm. patients, you know, mm -hmm. um, to your point, you know, from rejuvenation of, you know, the, the normal collagen of the skin mm -hmm. to inside of the joints, you know, being able to uh, hold the inflammation and that arthritis that is forming there, you know, so, mm -hmm. uh, but that's, yeah, that's one area, you know, within that I also do uh, prolotherapy or prolotherapy with ozone. Okay. Um, prolotherapy, what it is, is a mixture of a, an aesthetic with a dextrose, so a sugar molecule, mm -hmm. at a specific concentration. And so what that does is it helps tighten the tissue. So it's it's causing a, a local low level of inflammation mm -hmm. to an area that, you know, it's damaged. And so it will recruit more blood flow to the area. That's what inflammation does. Exactly. Recruits more blood flow to the area. Exactly. I love that. Exactly. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. after that, it will lay new tissue, new collagen. And so those ligaments that are frail, that are damaged, mm -hmm. will strengthen. And then it will obviously f function better. That's so. amazing. For example, I know one of my patients in particular who was going to have a knee replacement. Yeah. And she did PRP. Uh -huh. With Dr. Minasaki, five times never needed a replacement is fully functioning without pain. That's today. amazing. Yeah. So this is for patients who may want to halter or delay, sure, or prevent surgery. 100%. One of the three. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it's possible to heal joint pain without surgery. Yep. Not every time, but right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. to your point, right? There is that specific case where you will for sure need a surgery, right? But the earlier that we can. Uh, get treatment to patients, mm -hmm. you know, when at the onset of pain, you know, if you already know that you have, 
you know, um, ACL tears, or you mm -hmm. were a football player, a, a high performance athlete in the past, right? And so your joints are already pretty worn down. They've had the impact. Yeah. And so yeah. if we can, you know, get treatment earlier, right, to prevent that uh, degradation of the tissue mm -hmm. and that degeneration, you know, the better outcomes you're going to have. And yeah, to your point, you can even prevent surgery sometimes. Right. You know, so. Right. So do you do this, <clears throat> the next the thoracic and the lumbar, the whole spine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we can treat uh, cervical spine, uh, lum uh, lumbar spine, mm -hmm. uh, thoracic too. Obviously, not as common, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we do we do treatments with that. Um, hip joints, mm -hmm. obviously, knee joints are the most common areas. Are they? I would think that I would that that I see patients. Yeah, for. knees yeah. respond beautifully, and they yeah they do so injections. well with this type of injection therapy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, within the development of the, uh, of the, you know, industry as a whole, um, there's new called orthobiologics, you know, which mm -hmm. a lot of people, I don't even remember a few years ago that there was all these pop-up clinics calling it stem cell and, you know, we do stem cell here and all of that. But, you know, really it is an orthobiologic. So an orthobiologic is a different side of regenerative medicine, but they can also provide uh, tremendous benefits, you know, and what they are is their specific cells are derived from either placenta or uh, umbilical cord mm -hmm. uh, donors tissue, um, and they can really isolate those uh, specific growth factors and anti-inflammatory uh, genes and cells, mm -hmm. you know, that then we can introduce to an area that's damaged, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's another area that we can also use, and I use a very common to patients, you know, uh, because truly the only way that you're going to get a stem cell treatment is if they're extracting them from your adipose or your fat cells okay. or if they're extracting it from your bone marrow right so that's the only really way that you're going to get one autologous yeah autologous stem mm -hmm. cells coming from their own patient um and so that's you know if you can imagine that's more of a um, involved procedure right. risks you know are associated with that and so, you know, a lot of people have kind of deviated from that and are using now these orthobiologics that can mm. provide almost same level of, of uh, therapeutic effects as, you know, these autologous forms mm -hmm. without having to go through, you know, the risk with that. So, so orthobiologics, ortho means joint to me, biologic is... New. Yeah, just, uh, you know, the biological cells, you know, their own uh, biology of the human body, mm -hmm. you know, um, whether they're extracted from specific tissues or depending on the area. And they're know. young cells that hone other cells <clears throat> to repair. Exactly. Yeah. That's how I understand it. Yeah. No, yeah. that's a good, that's a good um, mm -hmm. way of putting it. And obviously they mimic uh, certain pathways that, you know, we can um, cell signaling, right? So they can tell the, the body, hey, there's a damage on this mm -hmm. area. We need over. to send more blood yeah. flow, more uh, own, you know, um, uh, growth factors and different important things are going to help. So our own faster. growth factors respond to the ones you inject. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing what the body can do with a little nudge. Yeah, it's so amazing, you know. And every 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 year, you know, we learn something new, and there's new technology and mm -hmm. new treatments coming out, and so um, it's just a, an exciting uh, time, you know, and a, an exciting. Um, branch, you know, mm -hmm. if you will, of um, pain management, pain management you know, right. that just provide that extra help to patients, you know, that normally or previously they wouldn't have access to. Right, so. right. I mean, I hear so many wonderful things. And is there any um, contraindication that you would say, I wouldn't enjoy, I would inject that joint for this reason? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So there's, uh, there's tons of different contraindications, you know, mm -hmm. depending on case by case. Um, obviously, if there's been any signs of infection in the joint, you want to be very careful mm -hmm. of, you know, going into a joint that's already been infected in the past because you can obviously reintroduce some sort of infected agent, mm -hmm. right? Um, if they have autoimmune conditions, you got to be a little more mindful of that um, to yeah. the, the choice of the, of the treatment, right? So, mm -hmm. if, for example, if someone has autoimmune, you know, ha um, Hashimoto's or autoimmune um, lupus, for example, you know, their immune system is already so reactive that, you know, you want to be mindful of those orthobiologics because they could react to that other agent, right? Mm -hmm. That it's in quotes, is it is a foreign agent that has been introduced to yeah. the body. And so their, their immune system can react negatively against those, you know, so right. uh, those things, obviously, if you have bone on bone uh, joints, mm -hmm. you know, it's very, very tough 
It's not going to rebuild. Yeah, for the regenerative medicine, you know, there's no <laughs> yeah. ligaments, there's no tissue, there's no cartilage there to really um, grow or expand or heal. So mm -hmm. those, are unfortunately, are pretty tough cases. Right, you know? right. And would you need an image each and every time? I wouldn't say each and every time. Um, and I'm, I'm a big uh, proponent of doing a proper physical evaluation of the patient, mm -hmm. you know, because if you can find their pain generator before you even talk about treatment, you're already uh, narrowing down your diagnosis to um, what you're thinking is causing. And if you need to confirm the diagnosis or if you need to rule out other um, diseases or mm -hmm. other ailments, then we can follow it up with an imaging. But at least I you see. already have a good, you know, good foundation of what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, because I've had patients, you know, that come to me before and they're like, well, you know, I went to an ortho uh, spine specialist and they told me that I have an L4, L5, this, this disease, bulge or herniation. And they treated it with, um, you know, different injections, nerve blocks, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, whatever it is. And I still have pain, you know, mm -hmm. and it helped for like maybe a couple of weeks and then it came back. You know, and mm -hmm. so what, what I tell them is that, well, do they do, you know, an evaluation of your spine properly, right? Do they tell you mm -hmm. what they were thinking before they even do the, the imaging or are they treating the image, you know, because they just Instead order the, the image. Yeah. Yes. They're like, oh, well, you have this. This must be the cause of your pain. Let's treat that. And then that's usually not how Interesting. it resolves. So, yeah, yeah, my big, you know, part of it is finding that pain generator, whether it's a nerve pain generator. inflammation, you yes. know, whether it's a ligament that's um, that's weak, a tendon, mm -hmm. or if it's coming truly from a joint. Interesting. So the pain generator gives you all the information that you need. Exactly. With or without an image. I totally yes. get it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So finding that, it's it's a key mm -hmm. uh, aspect of, you know, treating the patient for yeah. that proper... Uh, treatment that they're going to need it's basically like treating the cause like yeah, i say with 100%. patients and um you use um which is very unique i think to your practice um ultrasound guided injections yeah yep yep so um i would probably say 99 percent of the mm -hmm. injections that i do are always under ultrasound guidance mm -hmm. uh, because it's a fantastic tool that i provide to patients and to my care uh, that can maximize the accuracy of the injection right mm -hmm. because we know uh, let's say that somebody has an ACL tear, um, you know, we can identify that and we can treat that specifically where it needs mm -hmm. to be treated instead of just going blind and just injecting in general area, right? So it makes a big um, difference. Makes being a big able difference. To see. 100%, yeah. Especially in the spine. Mm -hmm. You know, you never want to go blind into a spine, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. You know, the risks are, you know, exponentially higher. Um, so either fluoroscopy or ultrasound are the, the imaging guidance of choice, right. um, because you can really identify those areas. You know, you can be careful of avoiding those nerves that you don't want to touch, mm -hmm. you know, obviously going into the spine. And so, um, yeah, for right now, I'm working with a technician that has over 25 years of experience in, uh, MSK of, or musculoskeletal ultrasound guidance, mm -hmm. which is also a very niche you know, um, yes. area of ultrasound. And so finding that good technician that's knowledgeable it's into so that important. is yes. very important. So. so we talked about prolotherapy, which is not using the patient's blood. That's step one. S yep. Uh -huh. PRP, platelet-rich plasma, which comes from the patient. Uh -huh. Or stem cells, which comes from umbilical cord. Yep. Um, yep. Part blood. of the orthobiologics. Orthobiologics. Yep. And you make the decision on what they need based on their pathology? 100%. I yeah. see. Yeah, based mm -hmm. on case by case, um, the severity of their pain, the severity of the damaged area, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so that's how we kind of determine what is that they need mm -hmm. uh, based on, you know, personal experience and research, you know. Obviously, as the research keeps progressing with the regenerative world, mm -hmm. uh, we learn more about, you know, what works, what doesn't work, you know, and then we can change and, and alter our, our treatments mm -hmm. based on everything. So, And are the patient outcomes dependent upon the patient's, like, self-care, nutrition, yeah. exercise? Yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah, so usually for my patients, I, I always... Uh, unless they're already following a specific diet, but I always put them on an anti-inflammatory diet. Mm -hmm. You know, that, I, that they start two weeks before the procedure and they follow it, you know, six to eight weeks after Beautiful. the procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, because you're already calming down that whole body inflammation that everybody has, you know, from mm -hmm. our environment, from our foods, from our stress. And so if you can calm down that area, 
the treatment is going to obviously work better. Mm-hmm. Um, your body is going to be more quiet in a way. So there's going to be able to, to um, deviate and to tell the body what it needs and how to send more blood flow to specific areas mm-hmm. that are needed. Um, and so additionally from that, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the cases I'll do bracing after the, mm-hmm. the procedures, uh, especially in the spine. So you want to, you know, by you injecting uh, X amount of fluid and volume into an area. And so they are going to have a period that are going to be Instable. more Instable. yeah, unstable mm-hmm. and maybe a little bit weaker because of that in treatment. So mm-hmm. you want to stabilize and keep that area rigid so that it can regenerate and do its uh, what it needs to do. And so we'll do uh, pelvic and lumbar bracing and cervical bracing for those patients. Uh, we also do some offloading uh, knee bracing. You know, if you have a patient that has severe arthritis of the mm-hmm. of the medial part of the joint, you want to right, you want to open up that joint so mm-hmm. there is more space in the area so that it can heal better instead of just having it closed and having that constant friction and right. and rub of that calcification. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and obviously PT. So PT the is very very important. Uh, to a lot of these patients um, and so you know i would say i always tell patients the goal is to really get you to a 70 percent improvement from mm-hmm. the injections whether it's in pain mobility and function mm-hmm. of that area and the other 30 percent is going to be dependent on you your body how it heals how it accepts the treatment yes. and your uh, follow-up um, care the physical therapy the bracing the stretching, you know, all of that is going to come in play to get sure. you to that right. other, you know, 30, 40% that you need. Right. It's just not you injecting. It's the patient's responsibility yeah, also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. I'm really grateful to have you here for our patients because they're asking. Yeah. I'm for excited the to be Conservative here. joint injections yes. that you do. Yes. Yes. So, and I just wanted to introduce you to our patients. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. Mm-hmm. No, this is great. And excited to work, you know, with you and mm-hmm. your staff and your patients. You know, I think, um, that's going to be a great option, um, you know, an alternative treatment to people, you know, that are already knowledgeable about, about or they've heard about it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we can offer that, that treatment. So. And so patients would first do a consult with you. Yeah. From there, you make a decision on the plan together. Exactly. Yeah. Whether right. it's follow up with imaging or, you mm-hmm. know, we, we can already, if they already got image from a previous provider, you mm-hmm. know, depending on the, on the, um, duration of the how long ago was that I- imaging that we can most likely use it and then mm. just you know talk to, about a plan beautiful there. beautiful yeah. so if anybody wants to schedule with dr david gallegos he's with us on tuesdays you can do your consult with him and any images he recommends and then treatment yeah um and he's with mm. us as of now so you can call and schedule anytime thank you so much for listening and i wish you a very uh, happy rest of your day bye-bye